This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Yo, your boy ran up and got punch up. Everybody's GDK. Everybody's this. You're not, bro. You're really not. Stop what you're saying. You're not, bro. Today, shell casings were everywhere. The shooting likely gang related. You got hit with a conspiracy to commit murder in 2014. Yeah. Nick Blixey was uh, discovered with gunshot wounds on Winthrop Street. Nicholas Thompson was shot around 9.30 last night. Tune into this. Niggas play disrespect today. If you ain't from around here, don't come here. Few places have as much of a storied gang history as New York City, baby. It's been the home to some of history's most notorious real-life gangsters. Names like John Gotti, Bugsy Siegel, and Lucky Luciano have all rung hard in the streets at some point in history. And of course, New York is the city that once boasted the most famous lineup of old-timey gangs in the form of the five mafia families that ran the city in real life but not quite as famous as the fictional ones that ran the city in The Godfather. In fact, the gangsters that run the streets of New York in 2021 look a lot different from old Don V. Owen Michael from the Corleone family. How can I put this? They've just got a lot more sauce. In my previous edition of Gangs of New York, we took a closer look at the Wu and Chu or Cho gangs of New York City, two large alliances of many smaller New York gangs whose name and signature calling rings in the streets of New York City today. With the Wu being made famous by the music of Pop Smoke, they're a conglomerate of Crip, Blood and other sets with their origins in the Wave Gang, with the Chu being a conglomerate of Gangster Disciple or GD connected sets with connections to the Hood Stars Gang in the early 2010s. So basically, the Wu and the Chu are bigger conglomerates of many smaller gang sets. And today, we're going to take a closer look at one of these specific feuds between different sets of the many New York gangs that make up the Wu and Chu alliances. With this story specifically focusing on the Wu Crips and their long held feud with the Chu, GDs, or Gangster Disciples. And look, I already know what you're thinking. Aren't Crips from LA? And aren't GDs from Chicago? Well, yes, Traplaw Ross viewer, but this isn't an all out US gangbang in Civil War, oh no. Because in the decades since they formed, Crip gangsters from LA and gangster disciples from Chicago found themselves thrown together in New York City, forming new alliances, starting new beefs, and bringing gang based bloodshed to the streets of the Big Apple. And only over the last few years have some of these gangsters drilling in the streets found their way into the recording booths where they were able to share their experiences fighting the Crip GD war on wax. And since the emergence of drill music in New York, specifically Brooklyn, we've seen Crip affiliated rappers like Bobby Schmurder, Favio Foreign, and Chef G all put in their blue rags on the map musically. And while Bobby Schmurder and GS9 did a lot to revive interest in gangster rap in New York City, it was really the most poppin' GD in New York, 22Gs, who is widely credited with pioneering the trend of New York street rappers going hard and spitting grimy street shit over UK drill type beats produced by the likes of Axel and Ghosty. 22Gs is essentially the one who introduced drill music as it is known today. But if it was 22Gs that started it, it was Pop Smoke that finished it. Because it's only in the last few years that the massive popularity of Pop Smoke has brought a huge amount of mainstream attention to the New York drill scene and its association with gang sets. Which once again, according to you, Traplor Ross subscriber, left New York City as the most popping area in hip hop in 2021. So what goes on in the streets of New York is crucial in understanding and appreciating the drill music that comes out of the city. So you know the settings, now let's take a close a look at the Crip and GD gangs that have been at war for the past few years, starting off with your beloved Crips. And now, a word from our sponsor. We all know how much 22Gs likes his growth and development. <laughs> well, what better way to grow and develop your skills bang, bang, than with bang. Skillshare? Yeah. Thanks, Skillshare, for sponsoring today's video. Gang, 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 gang. Skillshare gang. Skillshare is the best in online learning, that's by far. Skillshare. To explore new skills and deepen passions, I'm gonna take that class. Take that class. They got thousands, so join Skillshare now and go and browse them hard. Check them out. Skillshare's where creative and curious people gain their new skills. Boom, 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 boom. And their community's top notch. Top Skillshare notch. jumping like hopscotch. Boom. Life is uncertain, you don't know what's gonna pop off. Changing boom. careers or replacing boom. a lost job. Boom. If you're lacking in skills, Skillshare can help you pursue any field. I boom. wanted to learn how to make trap beats that build. Found this course boom. and man was thrilled. Boom. Trap music production. <laughs> Composition and arrangement by production duo okay, K Theory and Gang. It was straight up amazing. Yes. They taught me how to build this beat and structure a track. Bow. And now I make music Bow. like 2 2 G's. Bow. Man, before I was whack. <laughs> so if you're bored, now you can learn from the comfort of your own casa. Yeah, you got some skills, but you need some more. Put some new facts in your mata. Skillshare's the best way to learn is great. great. And there's no ads getting in your way. Wait. Never stop learning, always create. create. Join the community, come and say hey. hey. And the first 1,000 people who go click that link. Click that. Get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. Get that. 
After that, it's less than 10 bucks a month and you leave. So click that link in description and join Skillshare and join the team. Come on, Come on people, join Skillshare today. Their creative challenges and productivity classes can help you structure your time and set up achievable goals. You can learn a new skill, enhance your creativity, and you'll be helping support my channel. Click that link. According to NYPD gang research, Crips first emerged in the city of New York around 1993, bringing their love of hustling and blue things to Harlem. This was apparently the result of big Crips from Los Angeles with big arrest histories moving over to the East Coast in order to fly under the authorities' radars. And in the decades since their establishment, countless Crips sets have popped up in the city. However, in the modern day context of New York drill music culture, there's a few sets that stand out. Now, the most famous Crip in New York drill is arguably Pop Smoke. He hails from Canarsie, Brooklyn, also known as The Floss, or the 90s, a well-known crip hood which Pop Smoke is known to rep heavily in his music, constantly saying that he's big 092 and shouting out 50 clock and 100 clock crip sets in his tracks. He's also made cryptic references to the 823 crips in his interviews. I ain't gonna stop until I got 823 million though. That's the number? Yeah. Why yeah. that number? Yeah. Just 823 million. I need 823. Also from Canarsie or The Floss is recently clouted Pop Smoke lookalike and sound alike Dusty Locaine. This is a flossy movement. Yes. This is a wool movement. This is a neighborhood movement. This is a straight movement. So you really from Canarsie like, you know what I'm saying? Born and raised. If I ain't had this one out of show, you not fifth tatted on me. My oh, first oh, you got, oh. Now, after the tragic killing of Pop Smoke, the crown of King of Brooklyn Drill was truly for the taking. And in my opinion, nobody on the Crip side is getting more shine now than Fabio Foran. Fabi, another big old Crip who reps his gang affiliations in every aspect of his persona. His debut project was called 800 BC. They say it stands for before coronavirus, but we know it stands for Big Crip, baby. And that 800 doesn't mean 800 years before Crip Christ either, because Favi is really repping that 800 foreign side, a crew hailing out of East Flatbush, adjacent to Pop Smoke's native Canarsie. Now, Favi reps 800 foreign side so well, you could say that he knows it like the back of his hand, which is handy because he's got it literally tatted on the back of his hand. In fact, Favi actually told DJ Vlad in an interview that he grew up on the 90s side of East Flatbush, along with fellow 90s or GS9, G-Stone 90s Crip, a rowdy rebel. I was born in Brookdale and I was raised like in the 90s, that's East Flatbush. Okay. And I guess you and Rowdy Rebel actually grew up in the same building. He lived like down the hole and around the corner. And uh, Bobby Schmurder, he lived around you also? He's a fire. That's all gang. I mean, that's all family. So we can add Bobby Schmurder and Rowdy Rebel to New York's rap and crip lineup. In fact, you might have even heard Bobby Schmurder shouting out his fallen brother Scheist in some of his songs and interviews. Well, it turns out that Scheist was also a good friend of Fabio Forens, who's paid tribute to him by showcasing his mural in his music videos. Fun fact, that's actually from the music video for Critical, Fabio Foran featuring Fetty Luciano, who is funnily enough, Rowdy Rebel's little bro. Anyway, Fabio has also shouted out Scheist in interviews, saying that the ops should know better than to disrespect his name. They mentioned what? They mentioned the Scheist, they mentioned the King. I mean, that's one of the top dogs, and that's one of my men. That's, that's my men. That's, my, that's one of my, that's my best men, family member. I mean, that's his real life cousin, I mean. Favi is also known to show love to young Costamano, who reps Crip, as well as JD and D Sav of OMB, who weirdly got a shout out from 6 9 back in the day on his song Stupid, which also featured a Bobby Schmurder verse recorded in jail, weirdly. This is because these guys are actually known bloods, who for the record are friendly with Crips as part of the Wu Alliance. This is why you'll see JD, D Sav, and Fabio Foran all together rocking red and blue, dissing all the GDs and throwing up GDK in the music video for Blicky in a Box. But the final big old Crip on our lineup is Chef G, hailing from East Flatbush, along with his right-hand homie Sleepy Hallow. Chef G reps the 8 Trey Crips, or 8-3 Crips, also known as Movin Gang, with the 8 and the 3 from 8 Trey replacing the O and E in Movin Gang, because hey, even Crips like having fun with language. Anyway, the 8 Trays, or Movin Gang, are apparently not associated with the Wu and Cho movements, but are just straight Crippin' baby. And while you're there, Chef G is known to hang out with Jay Rich from the 4 Trey Crips, and frankly, that's just a whole lot of Crips, and a couple of bloods too. Thing is, there's something that all of these guys have in common, and it's it's not the color of their bandana. It's the fact that there's one thing, just one thing that they cannot stand, GDs. But who are these GDs that the Crips just can't get along with? I love Chris Rich. The Gangster Disciples are a gang originally from Chicago. Now, if you want to get a full breakdown of the history of the GDs from their inception in the late 60s and early 70s to today, then go check out my other video, Gangs of Chicago, the BDs versus the GDs. But it doesn't matter if you haven't seen that because all you need to know is that eventually, GDs made their way from Chicago to New York, in the end, falling under the Cho Alliance of Gangs. Something which I explained in detail in my other earlier video, Gangs of New York, Wu versus Chu. But most importantly, the Chu consists of a size 
sizable number of GDs or gangster disciples imported from Chicago. In fact, it seems to be that the Chu are allies of all of the GDs that operate in Brooklyn. Now, the New York GDs are sometimes referred to as the Folks, and they actually have a long history of operating in New York since the 90s. The Folk Nation movement itself was actually started by the GDs founder Larry Hoover whilst he was in jail in Chicago, with the idea to form an allegiance between the leaders of large white, black, and Hispanic gangs to try and control Chicago. Now, funnily enough, the GDs or Folk in New York City were initially allies of the Crips there. So way back in the 90s, the GDs and the Crips were all considered friendly under the banner of Folk Nation before the Wu and Cho gang alliances existed. And for a long period of time, GDs and Crips were cool in the city. In fact, apparently when GDs and Crips ran into each other, they were so cool with each other that they would combine their gang signs together as a show of friendship. With the Crips throwing up the C and the GDs throwing up the Pitchfork or Rakes, they would combine them to create the eight ball. Thing is though, as older generations of gangsters got locked up or killed, the new hot-headed generation of younger gangbangers would emerge, creating new alliances and traditions whilst trashing old ones. In 2014, the leader of the modern day folk nation in New York, aka the Six Trey Outlaw Gangster Disciples, Devon Rodney, also known as D-Block, was sentenced to 20 years after a RICO case that included attempted murder and robbery conspiracy. Authorities believe the crew is behind four murders, three attempted murders, and a string of assaults and robberies. Officials say one of the gang's victims includes a 10-year-old girl who was shot in the neck. Yes, the indictment stated that a hit on a rival gangster had gone wrong, leading to an innocent 10-year-old girl getting shot in the neck by accident. Now, the Devon Rodney case was in 2014. He was the kingpin of the GDs in New York, and he got put away on those RICO charges. A heavy-hitting co-defendant of his named Geraldo Eleanor also ended up taking a guilty plea for his role in a 2008 murder, an incident where he shot a child dead for playing in a GD-controlled playground. Nasty stuff. So Eleanor ended up getting 25 years for the murder, and the indictment said that nine other members of the folk nation had been charged. Now, here's where the trap law detective work takes place. According to a Vlad TV interview with 22Gs, in 2014, he also was charged with conspiracy to commit murder, a charge that was eventually dropped. In 2014, you got hit with a conspiracy charge. Yeah. Conspiracy to commit murder in 2014. Yeah. Now, 22Gs was a minor when this went down, so there's no public paperwork existing on this case. But in an old complex interview, it seems to suggest that 22Gs and three others were indicted and identified as members of the Flatbush gang Young Savages, who had apparently been plotting to kill members of the rival gang Only The Fields. And I was actually able to find another article from 2017 which seemed to suggest that this was a group of young GDs with association to Kingpin Davon Rodney's Six Tray GDs. And while there's no concrete proof that 22Gs was connected to this original overarching RICO case, or that earlier generation of folk GDs that used to run things around those parts, it's a bit of a coincidence, isn't it? Also, for the record, if it does turn out that 22Gs descended from a group of New York GDs called Six Tray, that will mean that he is quite literally from 63rd. Anyway, with the older generation of GDs locked up behind the wall, this left young GD 22Gs and his homeboys in prime position to fly the flag of the biggest GDs in New York. Now, there's many different names that have been associated with this particular group of GDs, so let me warn you, this might get a little bit confusing. Free the toilers, free the blickies. Shout out to the Shiggies and the Cho's. Okay, let me break it down for you. With the New York GDs and the Cho gangs, there's a lot of overlap. Just like over on the Wu side of things, you got Crips and Bloods coming together to bang under the Wu Alliance. Over on the Cho, you got crews like the GDs or Folk, as well as the Hood Stars who have historically beefed with the Wave Gang of the Wu, crews that aren't really relevant to this story. You've also got Cho crews like No Love City, who are known to have historically beefed with Bobby Schmurder's GS9 Crips. There's crews like PNV, home to Cho rapper PNVJ, but most importantly, under the GDs is the Twirl Alliance. Now, Envy Kane of the GDs said that Bills Blicky was the originator of the Twirl idea, but he refused to say exactly what it meant. And talk about the this, man, what's the difference? You the twirlers. I right, look free bills, Vicky. For me, SPNB. They're the ones who, for me, originated the whole twirl concept. You get me? Nick Blicky referred to twirling as the tutu spin dance move they created. I be watching all the ops videos. I be seeing them twirling, tutu spinning like. That shit is a wave now, I'm telling you. Very cute stuff, but really, the Twirl Alliance is a collection of GD banging hoods that are associated with 22Gs and his buddies. We're talking the Shiggies, and we're of course talking the Blickies, aka Blicky Gang, who are the main GDs today's story will be focused on. And the core of that crew hail from that same block that Big GD Davon Rodney used to run his empire from back before he was indicted. This block is known as the Field, referring specifically to the Ebbets Field projects in Crown Heights, which is the Blickies' turf. 
And there's numerous other nearby hoods that come under the banner of the Twirl Alliance, including Hawthorne Street, aka H Block, Project Letters Gardens, The Fennies, Newkirk, and Veer, all hoods in the Twirl Alliance. Where you from and shit for niggas that don't know? You know, most of us know, you know what I mean, for all out of towners and all that. Where you from? What hood you from? Where are you from? I'm from Flatbush. No doubt. Ace Block, Fenny, Fields, Kirk, Veer. Know the family, bro. You feel me? These bros in the building. BB. Shout out to my BG guys. My ZG guys. Blicky gang. TD guys. So the name Blicky gang is taken from New York slang meaning handgun. Or you might remember Blicky's being popularized by our boy 6 9 who famously said that he's got the Blicky with the stiffy on his hit song Gummo. However, the big difference between these Blickies and the ones that 6 9 was dropping in his lyrics is that when these Blickies write their names down, they X out the letter C in their name, of course, because they hate Crips so goddamn much. While the Crips have got their blue rags and the Bloods have got their reds, the Blickies are coming through on a much more stylish tip, instead choosing to rep black flags and bandanas, something that 22Gs has shouted out on many songs. Now, the Blickies have also appeared in numerous hood vlogs chilling on their block, including one with legendary Chicago hood documentarian Zach TV, rest in peace, which was titled The Blickies, The Most Hated Gang in Brooklyn. You ain't yeah. ever still right now, you know Phil, so. You ain't from here, don't come here, you niggas know what's up. We're in the Jax. We're in the headquarters. We're in the Jax with the demons. What's your name for the camera, man, for a motherfucker that don't know? Niggas that don't know me, my name is Nas Blicky, right? Mmm. One of the original Blickies, man? That's a fact. One That's of the originals. One of the niggas who started this shit up. My son right here who started this who, up. Who, 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 who? Blicky, right? Yep. Hey! We make drill music. We really talk about shit we do. When you say you got 30s and 40s and max, we not lying. That's all we gonna say. If you ain't from around here, don't come here. It's funny, in this vlog they even do a little roll call. Like it's the start of GD class or something, just in case the feds didn't have enough evidence on them. That's that blicky. Loop blicky. Stone blicky. Richie blicky. That's that blicky. That's that blicky. Keep blicky. Bigger blicky. Sprout blicky. Jew blicky. Sticks That's the ghost, you call them ghosts. Okay. Okay. However, the main characters for the purpose of this story are 22Gs, Nick Blicky, Nas Blicky, Lou Blicky, and Envy Kane. So, now you know who runs the streets of New York on both sides of the fence, you need to understand exactly why these two groups hate each other. And the insane reality is that the majority of the deadly beef between these two groups has been caused by a simple but powerful three-letter phrase. A phrase so powerful that saying it in the wrong block of New York or even Chicago could get you duly blammed in the face without warning. I'm of course talking about the If you know anything about Chicago gang culture, you'll already know what GDK means. Gangster Disciple Killer. It's something that the ops of the Gangster Disciples have adopted as something of a catchphrase. And gang signs play a part in this too. Because GDs are known to throw up the pitchforks or the rakes, and to do this sign upside down symbolizes GDK. Much like when doing the hand sign for the woo done upside down means woo K or woo killer. So on each side of this crip GD beef, there is no shortage of verbal gangbanging. And one of the worst offenders is of course Fabio Foran, who proudly refers to himself as Big GDK. Big GDK, top nine. That's world, shooting anything, spinning it, no time. Now, thankfully, Favi elaborated and explained something very important and kind of stupid. But when a New York rapper says GDK, they're apparently only referring to GDs in New York. My blood, Kate, I'm not. I'm not, I, I don't cut, like I said, we don't color bend, you feel me? I protect myself, you feel me? Mm. I'm getting straight cash, I'm GDK, I'm shooting anything too long, man. This GDK shit is, 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 as far as New York go. Well, I guess GDK B-O-I-N-Y doesn't really make a good ad lib, does it? Anywho, it's not just big GDK that loves throwing about this reckless catchphrase. D-Sav and Young Costamado are known to bang GDK too. A lot of niggas is GDK and never touch no GDs. I sat the cars, I said, yo, I'm proud of you cause you real GDK now, like you touched the GD nigga. So a lot of niggas that don't know, never touch the GD nigga. You're not GDK, cause you could be whoa. You could be whoa, you could do that. You not GDK though. Now, naturally, the GD Blickies aren't huge fans of everybody throwing up GDK. And in their Zach TV hood vlog, they're eager to acknowledge that they're Woo K or Woo Killers. And they say that at a certain point, it became trendy for rappers to come out as GDK. Capsule. Spells, Woo K, Woo K, folk shit. Fuck. A lot of niggas GDK now, but that's old news, you feel me? These niggas hey. is irritating, you feel me? Yeah. Everybody's GDK. Everybody's this. You're not, bro. You're really not. Stop oh, what you're saying, you're not, bro. bro. <laughs> you feel me? You, you know? be in your house eating oodles and noodles, nigga. I while I'm on the 
Black, yo, yo, nah. Crip killer, you heard? Meanwhile, the OG gangsters in New York were also annoyed at the GDK movement. Because just as we mentioned previously, there was a time back in the day when the Crips and the GDs in New York were friends. Combine that with the fact that there are GDs all over the US in Chicago, DC and beyond that have got nothing to do with this New York beef. So to many, especially the older generation of New York gangsters, the idea of running around the city saying K all GDs is mad dumb. You saying GDK, you not saying I'm choking. You ain't saying I'm Blicky K. You saying I'm GDK, fool. Niggas is from New York. Niggas are not thinking about niggas from Chicago and thinking about niggas from Yes City. Niggas is thinking about niggas from here. In fact, funnily enough, even Jay Rich from Moving Gang says that he doesn't drop the GDK rakes. His reasoning is because he says he has respect for the other people who built the drill scene all around the US, some of whom are GDs, suggesting that this beef between the Crips and the GDs is indeed a new thing. All this Crip and folk shit going on right now, that's some new shit right now. Mm -hmm. That whole beef shit, mm -hmm. all the older Gs can tell you that's some new shit right now for mm -hmm. me. I was fucking with mad Gs though, I fuck with Gs. I fuck with mad bloods, like, I don't drop rakes on my video. But at the end of the day, some of my homies, you feel me, that really put on, that really did their thing, is G, you feel me, like. Hell, at a certain point, the GDK movement picked up so much steam in New York, even the city's rat infestation were throwing GDK. Oh, I am wildin'. So, with clownery like this going on, it's no wonder that GDs all over the United States have come out to say that New York's GDK movement is wrong when there's literally no reason to start needless beef with GDs outside of the state. But for the people who are involved in the events that unfolded between these two groups, their hatred of the ops runs so deep that they're truly ready to bang GDK to the grave. So, now that we fully understand the city's gang culture and have become bona fide New York drillologists, let's take a closer look at some of the insane and deadly drama that unfolded between these two groups over the years and see how this deadly war played out in the streets of New York. The long battle between the Crips and GDs in New York is bloody, violent and shocking. It's kind of ironic that we started this video referencing the classic New York City gangsters from back in the day, because in the modern day the Gs in the streets of New York are in many ways much more brutal than their old school mafioso counterparts. For example, consider this grisly incident. In 2016, when a man who is said to have been connected to Bobby Smurder's GS9 gang was found drowned wearing a pair of cement shoes. The body that washed ashore Monday day in Sheep's Head Bay has been identified as 28-year-old Peter Martinez. He was reportedly in the G-Stone Crips crew, the gang infamously linked to the incarcerated rapper Bobby Schmurda. Martinez was not stabbed or shot, but bound and his feet cemented before being thrown into the city waters. Now, fun fact, this is actually the only time that this method of execution has been recorded as used in American crime history. For real, like the actual mafia back in the day didn't have the balls to do shit this brutal. Or perhaps maybe they know better than to try and drown someone wearing cement shoes, because it turns out this is actually a really bad way to get rid of a body. In this case, the deceased man actually floated back to the surface despite the cement boots, because that concrete wasn't given enough time to set, it eventually got oxygen in it, causing the deceased man to float back to the surface. So if there's any real gangsters watching, next time stick to using pigs. The best thing to do is feed them to pigs. Now look, that's just one example of how extreme things can get in the streets of New York City. Now look, whilst the individual that was drowned in that incident was connected to the GS9 Crips, that slaying actually isn't anything to do with this story. But it is an example of just how real things can get in the streets of New York when you are connected to the gang life. But if we take a closer look at the feud that went on between the GDs and the Crips in this story, we can see that in the modern day, a lot of the beef between these two groups has been escalated by music, drill music. Nowadays, since his passing, it's very easy to point at Pop Smoke and single hit him out as the anointed king of Brooklyn drill. And sure, Pop Smoke certainly did the most to bring New York drill music to the center of popular music, but the people in New York who created the Brooklyn drill sound as we know it today is 22Gs and the Blickies. Hell, in 2017, before Pop Smoke had spat a single bar into the microphone, the Blickies were just chilling on their spot, belting out the ad libs that would later make Pop Smoke famous. Oh, he's very tired. He's very tired. Nah, we rocking. Hold on, what you just do? Do it again. What that mean? Let the people know. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. But aside from being able to simply make the noise grrr, the Blickies were actually the first in New York to pioneer the trend of using UK drill beats in their songs. So originally, Bobby Schmurda and the GS9 Crips were the first rappers from Brooklyn to start speaking and rapping honestly about the gang life they were living, but they were mainly using Meat Mill type beats, nothing super original. It was only when 22G's Nas Blicky and Nico Suave combined rapping greasy New York gang shit over a UK drill beat that the Brooklyn drill sound was truly born for the first time. 
and this was on the track Blicky or Go Nowhere Without My Damn Blicky. Now look, this track doesn't sound like one of the more polished UK drill sounding beats that you would hear today from a top drill producer like Ghosty or Chris Rich. No, Blicky sounds a lot more basic, much more akin to an early UK drill song from back in the days of 2015-16 when British drill producers were still trying to find their signature sound. In fact, in 2016, New York's Blicky perfectly mirrored the kind of UK drill beat that you would hear in London in 2015. So, Blicky got things started as far as the Brooklyn drill scene is concerned, but the game would truly change when 22G's released his follow-up track, Suburban, which very quickly became his biggest song to date. The track's all about jumping out of black Suburban, shooting at your ops. It features specific disses to their ops, the 8-tray Crips, with lyrics saying that they're clipping them trays. Now, this song was a huge look for 22G's, but the Brooklyn drill scene was still very much in its infancy. The war between the Crips and the GDs was still going on in the streets, but this was the first time that it had truly made its way to wax. From here, it would take close to a year for the GD's ops to actually fully get in on the music hustle, but when they did, they would make a big splash. And eventually, in March 2017, Crip rapper Young Costamano and S550 dropped the track Folk in the Trunk, a track all about throwing folk, or GD's, into the trunk of your whip, a track naturally littered with many GDK ad-libs and hand signs, and direct disses to their GD op NVK. I the music video for Folk in the Trunk also allegedly included numerous locations on the GD op block of Ebbets Field, where these guys filmed themselves rapping and pretending to have actual Folk in the Trunk. Now, it was this track, Folk in the Trunk, that truly started the GDK movement in Brooklyn, giving the Crips or just any rapper that had a problem with the GDs in New York an outlet through drill music to apply pressure to their ops. In fact, as time went on, the GDK movement picked up so much steam, the NYPD eventually joined and they started pulling up on GD turf, playing Folk in the Trunk, just to troll the blickies. Oh, you look at a fuck in my fuck. Who's there who for that, bro? They crazy. <laughs> yeah, bro. Pook, you hear that? You hear that song? And so at this point, with all of the attention that Brooklyn drill tracks were beginning to get, it was only natural that more rapping crips decided to throw their hats into the ring and start dissing GDs on drill songs too. Most notably was, of course, Chef G who came through in April 2017 with his first song, For Dem Racks. This came along with a music video showing many members of Moving Gang showcasing just how much they hate GDs by dropping numerous rakes in the video. Yes, there's plenty of upside down pitchfork hand signs symbolizing that everybody in this video is indeed a GD killer, especially this one white dude in the background who's dropping those rakes a little too enthusiastically. Calm down, Simon, you don't want the GDs catching you lacking in Whole Foods now, do you? Anywho, setting aside all of the rakes that these crips were dropping with their hands, Chef G decided to take it to the next level by literally beating the shit out of an actual rake in the video. Hey, fuck that rake, I heard he was Leaf K. Hey, at least we know Sideshow Bob's GDK now. Anywho, between Young Costamado, Chef G, and the NYPD, the GDK movement was picking up big steam in New York. Naturally, the rise of the GDK movement would eventually make its way back to the GDs themselves, and eventually, when Mel's TV caught up with the Blickies for a hood vlog, they themselves acknowledged the rise of GDK in Brooklyn, but suggested that everybody was just riding the wave for clout. It's GDK. I need to know when this shit started, though. Like, G shit, when did this shit start, my nigga? Free my guys, man, who got locked up 2012, my nigga. Nobody was GDK then. Funnily enough, they also called out Young Costamaro, saying that they filmed Folk in the Trunk right at the edge of their hood, and that they wouldn't have the balls to come and film it right here on this spot where they're standing right now. Do you see where we chill at, bro? Exactly. Come shoot the music video right here. <laughs> you gonna go all the way on the other side. Oh, somebody shot. Come on, bro. Oh. Coming over here, I don't know, at five, six in the Dude, morning, like I don't know. In the, morning. the nigga that made Folk in the Trunk, I bet you he would have never did it right here. I ain't gonna hold you. Know you know where you at, nigga. Come try to shoot that shit right here. We'd have beat really the shit yourself. out his ass. <laughs> so, the beef between the Blickies and the Crips made its way to music and got popping. The GDK movement was picking up steam, and the GDs weren't too happy about it either. But at this point, unfortunately, just when his team needed him the most, the Blicky general himself and pioneer of the Brooklyn Sound 22Gs would end up getting locked up for months on serious charges, not even in the state of New York. In a case that seemed so insane, nobody with a brain in their head Head thought that 22 G's would ever see the outside of a prison cell ever again. On Sunday, the 29th of May, 2017, 22 G's was in Miami for Memorial Day weekend. He'd landed there a few days earlier to play the Coast to Coast Live Music Showcase. Now, allegedly, 22 G's was on Ocean Drive. 
standing on the curb trying to guide an acquaintance of his who was trying to parallel park a white BMW 5 Series with New York plates into a tight spot. Now apparently this spot was just too small for the car and they ended up bumping a Buick that was nearby numerous times. Now apparently the owner of the vehicle that was bumped by Tuku G's friend was standing across the street and saw all of this happen. So he came over with his friend and decided to confront Tutu G's. At this point the driver of the car leaned out and told the owner of the Buick and his friend to quote step the fuck back. It was then alleged that the driver passed a handgun to Tutu G's after he climbed into the passenger seat whilst this conversation was going on. This confrontation between these two sets of men quickly escalated into an argument and the confrontation ending allegedly with Tutu G's firing that gun twice, hitting the owner of the car in the back and killing him and hitting his friend in the leg leaving him injured. Now Tutu G's and the driver immediately fled the scene of the murder but at this point the police had already been called and managed to catch up with the white BMW only a minute later at Alton Road and 2nd Street. From here a high speed chase ensued which ended in a a crash at the corner of 5th Street and Alton Road. After the crash, the cops opened fire, killing the driver and then taking 22Gs into custody. With the raucous arrest even being caught on video and the news reporting extensively on this insane crime scene. Sunday night, an argument over a parking spot left one man dead and led to a confrontation with police leaving a second man killed. Investigators say it started at the 200 block of Ocean Drive. 19-year-old Jeffrey Alexander allegedly shot and killed 30-year-old Ladarian Tyrell Phillips of Homestead. Alexander then fled to Alton Road and 6th Street with his three friends, say police, one of whom died after being shot by the cops. Alexander is now charged with one count of second degree murder and attempted second degree murder. Another one of Alexander's victims survived the shooting and is now home from the hospital. Police say Alexander fired several shots, hitting the Buick driver in the leg and fatally striking the other man in the back. The BMW then crashed into two police cars several blocks away. Two officers fired at the car, killing one of the four men inside. Three others were arrested, including Alexander. Wild. So, 22G's caught an instant murder charge in Miami, and as a result, he was sat in jail out of New York awaiting further developments. This meant the GDs were lacking their most talented and clouted musical act, but thankfully they at least tried to continue releasing music without 22 actually being present. There was some music he'd recorded before he went away, like the track Invest in a Ratchet, the music video of which was filmed a week before 22 was arrested, a music video which featured a hilarious sequence where 22G's chases a camera that's driving away from him at the end. It features some of that raw footage from the Miami Miami arrest, and even a phone recording from Tutu himself while he was still sat in that Miami jail. Berkey, I know what's up. They got me in this bum ass jail shit, and I ain't do shit. Shout out to all the fans and shit though. Subscribe to that Blicky Gang ENT, Blicky Boys ENT. But meanwhile, back in Ebbets Field, Breezy Blicky, Nick Blicky, and Nas Blicky dropped their song Different Type of Time, a track which naturally disses Jay Rich and the other Crips. But there was something that the Blickies were not counting on, because meanwhile, whilst 22Gs was locked up, their biggest ops over on the Crips side were making music, doing interviews, and picking up clout, scheming for a big release that would take this war between the Crips and GDs up to the next level. While 22G's is locked up in Miami facing the murder charge of a lifetime, Chef G drops the game-changing Brooklyn Drill track No Suburban, a direct response to 22G's track Regular Suburban. No Suburban blew up in a big way and even ended up becoming more popular than the original version. The music video for No Suburban naturally opens up with a sequence where Chef G and a woman throws up GDK. In the song, Chef says that he will leave a blicky sticky. He of course shouts out his moving gang crits and just generally shows mad disrespect to his ops, the GDs. And this strategy ended up being a massive success for Chef G's musical clown. So he continued. In September, he linked up with his homie Sleepy Hallow to drop the track Blicky's Hurting. Doesn't take a genius to work out what this song's about. Obviously, it opens up he's dissing the Blickies hard. But in the defense of the Blickies, in many ways, Chef G was really kicking them while they were down. But luckily, it wouldn't take long for the fortunes of the Blickies to turn around once again. As in October, prosecutors in Miami quietly drop the charges against 22Gs, and he becomes a free man once again at the start of November. The feds ultimately concluded that it was the un identified driver that had committed murder before the high-speed chase, ultimately letting 22Gs off the hook completely scot-free. And this is despite the fact that the second man who was shot in the leg survived and made a statement that 22Gs was indeed the shooter. But I guess that's none of my business. Have I mentioned how much I like and respect 22Gs by the way? 
Just want to make that clear at this point in the story. Now, for the record, there is absolutely no evidence to say that 22Gs wrote a statement or snitched on his dead homie or anything like that. But this wouldn't stop the Ops from using this situation against him because once 22Gs got off of this case so easily, from here on out, his enemies would frequently use this against him as evidence that he is somehow some kind of snitch. But regardless of how you want to spin it, 22Gs was home and naturally all the Blickies were celebrating, which you know is going to make the Crips big old mad. <laughs> Of course, the first thing 22Gs did when he got home was link up with the absolute king of New York hood vlogs, Mel's TV, to film himself a fire welcome home vlog. Stay tall, y'all. Blicky gang on top, y'all know how we coming. Gang still here and shit, y'all see what's up. Oh, Let's get some do say, y'all. Oh, oh, bro, I got, bro. Oh, I got more sour than you can imagine, bro. I got sour than all y'all. Hold it down, bro. I'm not trying to go back to jail yet, nigga. Right. Nick, man. You're 22 home now, That's boy. That's right, nigga. Niggas gonna have a problem, you heard? Oh, shit. Yeah, you know, you know, I know y'all gonna do some heat together. It's over, man. Yeah, you already know. Oh, man. It ain't gonna stop. Yeah, you know that. This shit just for me. Oh, My boy's home. That's a fact. Ain't no more free 22. He back, man. Yeah. Shit. Nigga seen free 22 till it was backwards. Now my nigga here, nigga, uh -huh. you heard? Oh, 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 you as today my first day? Yeah, I just got out. Now that 22Gs was home, he was finally able to share his mind about the ongoing Crip invasion in Brooklyn drill music. Because Chef G and the GDK movement had only really emerged and come to the forefront of the scene whilst 22Gs had been locked up. In many ways, the Ops had kind of taken advantage of the difficult situation that 22Gs was in when he was facing these charges. So now he was home, he was ready to clap back. And in the months that followed, both Chef G and 22Gs would appear in interviews with the likes of DJ Vlad or Mel's TV, firing shots back and forth relating to this beef. 22Gs generally just pointed to Chef G and called him a clout chaser. I don't really know, I don't really know something like that, you feel me? In my city right now, you feel me? Everybody chasing clout. And Chef would clap back in a Mel's TV interview with his perspective, saying that 22Gs and the Blickies were the ones who dissed them first. Listen, I never put that, I never labeled that as a diss track. Right, right, Everybody right. seen that, they labeled it as a diss track. I'm right. talking facts on that, you feel me? Yeah, that's, a, that's, that's, that's to let you know, it's not no diss track, it's letting you know. Shit, if you mean? feel a way, then you feel a way. If that's the case, that means Suburban is a diss track. That's a fact. You that's like, you, like, you ain't hear it. Niggas yeah, talking yeah. about clipping them trays like they're CP, right? Right, you like, yeah, we here That's what y'all saying. Chef G actually later appeared on a Vlante TV interview, refusing to confirm that the song No Suburban was indeed a diss aimed at 22Gs. Now, even if Chef G couldn't acknowledge that he was kind of clout chasing a little bit just by entertaining this beef in music at all, what was clear was that Chef G and the Crips surrounding him knew that there was a ton of money to be made by stoking this beef to elevate Chef G's musical profile. So they used 22Gs return to New York as even more reason to stoke the flames further. Soon coming out with a video for a new track called Glock with a Stick. The Crips were filmed in a behind the scenes for this music video throwing up Big GDK, in fact, at one point, their hatred for the Ops seemed to get so out of control, things descended into what I can only describe as a Crippin frenzy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, it's so easy to get caught up in that crip shit, isn't it? Anyway, only a few days after that, in November, Chef G would then make the song Welcome Home, a track that essentially welcomes 22G's home, slash sets his intentions to openly capitalize on him being home with beef. Fun fact, the music video for that song came with an early cameo from your boy Pop Smoke. Anywho, despite all of the trolling and disses, 22Gs got back to work and got back in the studio, dropping his own Welcome Home doubleheader track in December, first day out slash stuck in the yams. He followed that up with another track, We On, featuring Nas Blicky in December 2017, the latter of which is a way more kind of wavy, mainstream auto-tune type rap, which was definitely a real momentary change in style for what the Blickies were doing back then. But in stark contrast to this, the Crippy fellows over at Moving Gang were doubling down on the Crip shit, dropping the music video for the track Attic, which featured more Crip muscle than the Special Olympics. Anywho, before he even gets an opportunity to clap back at the Move and Gang Crips, 22Gs would unfortunately find himself back in another legal situation with the cops. But thankfully this time under much more entertaining circumstances. On February the 12th, 2018, 22Gs and several other people are arrested and booked at the 71st Precinct Police Station in Crown Heights. But seemingly when the cops booked 22Gs and his homeboys, they didn't follow proper search procedure before taking them to the cells. So when 22Gs gets 
gets to a holding cell with all of his belongings still on him, he grabs his phone and starts live streaming with hilarious consequences. Now this is some naughty behavior, and this went on for a while. These guys were talking their shit. They said they were gonna catch anybody who's woo in booking. Whoever woo in the book is about to die. Woo to my mother. You in the book is fuck. At one point, they even pulled out that loud pack, which they clearly hadn't even been searched for. Now, eventually, the cops realized what was going on, and it was them that got in a lot of trouble when this story finally hit the media. Thankfully, Tutu himself didn't face any serious consequences for this, and was even able to mop up a nice bit of excess clout with the attention that it got him. Thing is, though, whilst Tutu is building up notoriety for his shenanigans, over on the Crip side, Chef G is building up momentum with music. In February 26, dropping his next song, Play for the Members. Which, for the record, I just want to point out is actually suspiciously similar in title and style to the track Play for the Pagans by the UK drill group CGM, which dropped months before Play for the Members. Just to remind everybody that we started this shit. Yes, on hammers, I ain't got no man, this is baby mum, give me ucky. Anyway, while Chef G is making big moves for all of the Crips in Brooklyn, and making a hell of a lot of money whilst he's doing it, at a certain point, other Crips realize the finesse that's going on and decide to get in on the hustle. And it was at this point in March 2018 that your boy Big GDK Fabio Foran makes his musical debut in this beef with his track Blicky in a Box alongside JD and D Sad. Now, it doesn't take a genius to work out what the song Blicky in a Box is about, is it? This is basically Fabio Foran doing his version of Folk in the Trunk. The video is, of course, filled with GDK hand signs, and the song specifically disses 22G's inferring that he snitched his way way out of that murder charge in Miami, as well as saying Tutu gone dad. The song also says that they're going to spin Nas Blicky specifically, and there are numerous other ops that get mentioned or dissed by name. At this point, Blicky in a Box became Fabio Foreign's breakout song, his biggest to date, and it was his first to crack a million views. So you can't say rep in GDK doesn't give you some clout. Shit, at a certain point, it makes me want to start throwing up GDK. But for the record, when I say GDK, I'm only referring to the gangster disciples in Bogner Regis. That's just facts. That's for the record. Anyway, much like Chef G did with No Suburban, despite the music video for Blicky in a box, being filled with people throwing up GDK signs and calling out rivals by name, Fabio also maintained that this was not a diss song. Is it is it is 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 it Joe Rap? <laughs> it's Joe Rap. I don't diss nobody. It was undeniable that the GDK movement was picking up steam in New York Drill at this point, and the Crips were applying big pressure to GDs in their songs. But the GDs would respond not by getting in the booth, but by hitting the streets. And so, over the course of 2018, we would see back-to-back -back physical altercations between these two groups, ironically escalating the street beef significantly and bringing a lot of new attention to the music. In late March 2018, Chef G goes live from a hospital sporting what looks like a nasty head injury. Tune into this. Niggas pay disrespect today. Yo, niggas pay disrespect. Look, look, look. Niggas pay disrespect today. Niggas pay disrespect today. This, this is too much. <laughs> this is too much now. <laughs> Despite Chef G's good-natured demeanor, he had been stabbed in the head. He required staples in the wound, and they had to cut off his brakes. Chef would go on to downplay his injury in a Mel's TV interview, just saying that it was some regular shit. So why the video made it look like you had a big flash on your face or something? Like, you know what I'm saying? That's the truth. Blood leaked down, you know what I mean? Right, right. So you gotta let the people know yourself. Yeah, but that's regular shit. That shit that happened, like, on a daily, like. Yeah, street shit. This was, like, that was funny. Really out here. It was funny. I'm laughing on the loud. I'm like, yo, can we just cut me this? He also downplayed it in a Vlad interview. I got cut in my head. Oh, so someone went up behind you and actually cut yeah, you in the head. I got cut from the back. 
back of my head. And in a This Is 50 interview. Jesus. I got cut, I ain't get stabbed. Okay. Me? I got cut, same like thing. a slice. No, not the same. Stabbing is somebody juke you, you feel me? Okay. A slice is like, you feel me? Now with this super tough guy act, it's no surprise that people were commenting things like, when Chef G got stabbed, the knife got rushed to hospital and put in a coma. But the reality is, this was a pretty nasty and violent altercation that most likely was a direct result of the attention that Chef was bringing to himself through this musical beef. Now in that This Is 50 interview that occurred sometime after this interview, Chef G actually did break down some of the circumstances that led to this altercation, explaining that he'd been caught lacking by the ops when he'd gone to check in at probation. For me, I was at probation. In Brooklyn, they put everybody on probation at the same building. Mm -hmm. For me, so you gonna run into everybody in Brooklyn or whatever, whoever got probation that same day. I was in front of the building, and I got into an altercation, got into a fight. For me, but I didn't know I got cut until after I seen the blood leaking, for me, that's how I know I got cut. Also, for the record, this interview contained a bizarre moment where Chef G was asked about his cane. I see you got a cane now. Now this is it for me. Everybody from Brooklyn, let me make this clear. Please for make me, it clear. Help us everybody out. from Brooklyn knows what the cane mean in Brooklyn. I, I ain't gonna explain You gonna leave it right there? Yeah, we gonna leave it right there. <laughs> I don't know why that's funny, that's just kind of cool. The Crips, you know, they they work, they have canes because they're like Crypt. Pimpin, pimpin, they're pimpin. It's like all the Crips just got together and agreed that they would have a bunch of secret Crip jokes that they would do at interviews. I just love it. 823 million. Anyway, this isn't definitively proven, but a well-circulated rumor going around online seems to suggest that the person responsible for stabbing Chef G in the head was none other than Nick Blicky. And Breezy Blicky fueled these rumors further after appearing in a live where he seemed to suggest that the Blickies had taken responsibility for what happened to Chef. Well, niggas forgetting that niggas stabbed that fat nigga Chef in his fucking face. I don't know why niggas forget that. Blicky Game made his pussy ass cut his head. Perhaps because of this incident or maybe some other unnamed legal repercussions relating to some other shit that went down in the streets after this happened. At a certain point, Chef G was forced to go quiet both musically and on social media for a period of six months. So much like in 2017 when the GDs had lost two two Gs, in 2018 there was a long period where Chef G was MIA, which the GD Blickies would take advantage of too. So the summer of 2018 was hot for the Blickies both in the streets and musically. Two two Gs upped his output dropping numerous songs and music videos for hard hitting tracks like Blicky to Blicky and Why, but then in October, Chef G would return with some very savvy business moves. Chef decided to drop numerous music videos on British hip hop platforms that had been supporting the UK drill movement like Press Play. This is one of a few platforms that's kind of like a British UK drill version of World Star or Lyrical Lemonade, only with a lot more ballets. Chef even took this British fan base finesse a step further by doing a collab with a bona fide UK drill artist called Taze. Now to me, this was a very smart business Business move by Chef G because it allowed him to very quickly build up a massive international fan base. If 22G's was the pioneer of importing the UK drill sound from London to New York, then Chef G was the pioneer of re-exporting that Brooklyn drill sound back to London and building up a massive fan base in the process. Chef G even said himself that this strategy resulted in him having as big of a fan base in the UK as he had in Brooklyn, and I can attest to that because we fuck with Chef G here in the UK. In a way, it all seemed as if Chef G was truly trying to make the best and smartest career moves that he possibly could to ensure that his legit career as a rapper could eventually keep him out of the streets. And the timing of this made a lot of sense because also in October 2018, a prominent leader of Chef G's 8 Trey Crips was convicted of a murder charge after a big racketeering indictment. Larry Paggart, who was said to have been the leader of the 8 Trey Crips, was said to have opened fire in a busy hookah bar on behalf of the gang, killing his opposition and wounding an innocent bystander in a brazen attack recorded on CCTV and shown to the jury in a trial that explicitly documented the ongoing feud between the 8 Trey Crips and the folk gangs of New York, the GDs. So with the inner details of this feud making its way to federal investigations and courts, the likes of Chef G would be pretty wise to have their legitimate music industry business handled in order to keep them out the streets if a federal indictment ever comes their way. And perhaps around this same time, 22Gs also had the same idea. Because meanwhile, also in October, 22 ended up signing himself a deal with Florida rapper, irresponsible gun owner, and Donald Trump's newest homeboy, Kodak Black, joining his sniper gang label for an understatement closed amount. Blicky, blicky, blicky. Sniper Blicky, man. Blicky the sniper. Sniper. Gang, gang. I twirl on y'all ass. Stop playing. Kodak and Tutu go on to drop their joint track Spin the Block together, and Kodak puts on Tutu in a big way by getting him opportunities to perform bigger and bigger concerts. Me and Tutu 
So all of this is going on while a fresh-faced Fabio Foran is riding that GDK wave all the way to the top of the rap game too. Fabio drops songs like TT with Drizzy Giuliano, Gimme Dat with JD, and Noah's Ark with Gino Mondana. But as we get into 2019, it looks like members of each crew are looking to put in work on the street. With the Crips perhaps still looking to settle the score for what happened to Chef G's head, in January 2019, a car full of moving gang associates are seen spinning the GD block of Ebbets Field on social media. Fuck Rich This nigga JD. Yo, get in the car, bro. What the fuck is a cab? Fuck the fuck! GDK, fuck, bro. Niggas not even outside. Hold on. Out of me. Yo, Wally, yo, Wally, where y'all at? You heard? I'm out here, you heard? Spin up black. Hold on. Then later that same month, associates of the Blickies claim to have had a crip dashing and showing off footage of them seemingly knocking an op unconscious. Come on, Sleek. Come on, Sleek. What ah! you doing? And we just knocked your man's out. Mom, let me see your phone. Ah! And we just ah, knocked nice. your man's out. Look at your man's. Woozy. Look at him. He can't even get up. Drop the. Look, he can't even I get see up. I see Slick with the duck phone. Look, your man's can't even ah! get up. Your man's can't even get up. Help, I'm folded and I can't get up. Help, I'm folded and I can't get up. Oh! Come on, look at him. He still can't get up. Look at him. Leg thing on your man. What's popping out from the bill? Stupid wrong answer. And for some, the heat in the streets becomes too much. JD ended up on a live with Nas Blicky a year after making Blicky in a box with Fabio Foran, saying that he's not really GDK and that he's just beefing with Nas Blicky specifically. Anybody mad if I said that? It's whack. It's boring. I don't want to say that no more. GDK is boring. It's whack. You can't be. What are you talking about, bro? You GDK, you GDK, bro. Don't make it seem like on social media you got GDK. That you see a GD nigga, you trying to do it, bro. Don't do none of that, bro. You GDK, stay fucking GDK, nigga. Stay how you fucking is. But he later backtracks, drops a song saying GDK and dissing Nas Blicky anyway. But outside of social media, eventually the ops collide once again. This time in April 2019. When Chef G gets confronted in a courthouse by an op recording on Facebook Live, a clip which I can't show you in full due to YouTube's community guidelines, but Chef basically just beats the guy up on the spot. It's top out, nigga. You heard me. Wow. Now, after this steaming mess had played out on Facebook Live, Chef G decided to jump in the back of a cab and react to this hilarious situation in a social media clip that eventually made its way to Mel's TV. As y'all can see in the video, your boy ran up and got punch up. Him and it was two of them, both of them, punch both of them. Boop, 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 boop. I didn't even know boy was live. I didn't even know he was live. Punch him out. Are you fucking dumb? Do you know how I am? How are you gonna run up and get done up on your own live? Like, big up yourself, cuz, like, why you ain't punch Chef G? I didn't get hit not once, I didn't get no hit. I wanted to get mad, you know you get hit, you get angry. I didn't get, yo, Froze, I told him, I said, yo, come outside, so I could rip you in half outside and kidnap one of y'all. I'd probably try to kidnap one of y'all on my life. And at a certain point, Chef G got all Miami zombie on Crip. Yo, on Crip, look, this on my life. I tried to bite the nigga face off, the first little nigga that had the braids. On Crip, if I had more time, cuz, if I had more time, I would've ripped out of, yo, cuz, I would probably ate both y'all alive, nigga. No homo, nigga. On the guys, nigga. Jokes aside, though, Chef G said in this clip that nobody has ever run up on him in the streets of New York and that his ops cannot say the same. No op ran down on me in the streets of New York City in my whole entire life. Nobody ever shot at me. Nobody ever shot at me. No op ever pulled a gun and shot at me in my life. Never. Y'all cannot say the same. I was chasing them. I was chasing them. You never fucking chased me. Fortunately, as we go into 2019, both the Crips and the GDs on both sides of this battle were able to stay much more focused on the music than on the streets. Perhaps it was partly as a result of increased police activity, but either way you look at it, without a doubt, 2019 was the year the Brooklyn Drill exploded into the mainstream music consciousness. And it was at this point that a musical gold rush flooded through the streets of New York, taking anybody with a gang affiliation and a half-decent flow right to the top of the rap game. Now, Pop Smoke isn't a huge part of this story in the street, but what he did to bring Brooklyn Drill to the mainstream of the music industry had an enormous impact on everyone else involved in this story. It was in April 2019 that Pop Smoke released his breakout song, Welcome to the Party, which blew up big worldwide and ended up getting all-star remixes from the likes of Nicki Minaj and Skepta in it, with Pop Smoke of course throwing the 9-2 from his beloved 092 Crips on every cover of that project. Welcome to the Party was followed up by Pop Smoke's debut mixtape, Meet the Woo. Pop Smoke's Meet the Woo mixtape ended up 
landing on the Billboard 200 charts at 173. See, looking back at just how big Pop Smoke got after he died can be a little bit misleading. Because if you compare Pop Smoke's insane posthumous debut album release to anything else by any other New York driller, Pop Smoke stands head and shoulders above everyone else. But you've got to remember that Pop Smoke only really got his flowers after his death. I mean, get this, the track Dior that everybody loves, that's so famous for being a Pop Smoke hit, never even charted on Billboard whilst he was alive. So even the simple accolade of making a mixtape that even gets in at the bottom of the Billboard 200 is a groundbreaking look for the New York drill scene as a whole. Doesn't matter whether you're Woo or Chu, Crip or GD. Pop Smoke's success brought a huge amount of outside attention to all of the artists in this Brooklyn drill community, elevating the entire scene as a whole, which in turn helped the rapping Crips and GDs on both sides of the fence build successful bodies of work musically. So in Brooklyn Drill, 2019 was really all about making the most out of the opportunity that you had and going mainstream. And one of the biggest success stories to come out of the Brooklyn Drill scene over this period was of course fellow woo banging Crip and close friend of Pop Smoke, Fabio Foreign, who released his breakout track, Big Drip, in June 2019 as part of his debut EP, Pain and Love. The music video for Big Drip dropped in August 2019 and it went ham. Today that video sits at over 60 million views on YouTube and Big Drip became a monster hit for Fabio Foreign. Eventually getting an all-star remix including two of the biggest hitters in the rap game, Quavo and Lil Baby. Of course the hook of that song is Big Drip rhymed with Crip shit and elsewhere in this supposedly radio friendly hit Fabio Foreign is proudly proclaiming that he is GDK. Big Drip was followed up by Jumpin, another big success with close to 10 mil views on it on YouTube today and at this point Fabio Foreign was experiencing the pop smoke effect and became a very hot property in the music industry. And Fabio's incredible 2019 run culminated in him signing a record deal with Columbia worth reportedly over seven figures. Since then, Fabio Foreign released his debut commercial project 800 BC, and most notably bagging a feature on the Drake Drill-inspired track Demons, which ended up going number 34 on Billboard. This was Fabio's first chart hit, and it was followed up by the track Zoo York with Pop Smoke and Lil TJ, which peaked at 37. It's pretty safe to say that Fabio Foreign rode that GDK wave right to the top. And to his credit, ever since Fabio Foreign has broken into the music industry, he seems to have moved smart and stayed well away from the street shit. So whilst Fabio Foreign had gone full blown into the music industry and the Brooklyn Drill Gold Rush of 2019 was still going on, Chef G decided to get busy on an independent tip, dropping numerous big tracks throughout 2019 including Automatic in 2019, Flows in May, Panic 4 in July, and Tonight in August. Now it's really important to notice here that Chef G was making more and more effort with every single drop that he made. He was constantly upping the production values and shooting cinematic type scenes for his music videos that portrayed him as a big gangster or kingpin that thus increasing the mythos around him as a rap persona. And then in September, Chef G drops one of his biggest songs ever, We Gettin' Money. This track is a certified hit and it's the perfect lead-in to the release of Chef G's debut mixtape, The Unlucky Kid. For the record, The Unlucky Kid is spelt with about 3,000 Cs, just to let you know he's crippin' baby. Now, Chef G put himself in the position to win big with his actions in 2019, but of course, not far behind was our old GD pal 22Gs. He dropped a music video for the track Shoot Em Up in May, seemingly filmed while he was off getting that tour bag with Kodak Black. Then in June, Tutu drops the first single from his upcoming mixtape, a track called Crime Rate, where he appeared in the video showing off an impeccable six pack, proving to the world that when he's not on the op block applying pressure, he's at home doing crunches. This leads us to July 2019, where Tutu G's releases his debut mixtape underneath Kodak Black's sniper gang label, The Blicky Tape. This came along with a music video for the track FNs and Blickies, a music video which was filmed at a car wash of all places. Kinda disappointed that he didn't take a leaf out of Chef G's book, grab a few extra scenes of that car wash and make a GD remake of the wash. Anywho, after that, in September 2019, 22Gs followed up with King of New York, a bold music video where he even appeared hanging out of a white BMW just like the ones that he did the dash from the cops in back in Miami. Also, for the record, that car is very clean. And after that, 22Gs takes a page out of Chef G's marketing playbook, releasing a song on British rap platform Mixtape Madness. However, if you ask me, he kind of took an L on this one, because the song that he dropped was called So Brooklyn, not really going to resonate with a UK audience. But to make things even worse, he wasn't even rapping over a UK drill beat. So this didn't really have much of an appeal to a UK audience, unlike Chef G's UK uploads or even 22G's earlier work where he was rapping over UK drill beats. As a result, So Brooklyn kind of flopped in the UK and it didn't really get the views that it maybe deserved. But that didn't matter because 22G's had numerous other bona fide hits under his belt from 2019. And at this point, both 22 and Chef G could legitimately say that they had successful careers in the music industry and didn't need to gangbang anymore. They had the best opportunity they possibly could have to get out the streets for good and leave their past lives of violence and crime behind them. However, unfortunately, their pasts would soon catch up with them. But this time, it wouldn't be an op causing issues for the drillers, it would be the cops causing issues for the drillers. As in October 2019, due to the previous violence
violence in the street associated with these drill acts, the NYPD stepped in to put the brakes on the music careers of everybody involved. As 22G's, Chef G, Pop Smoke, as well as Gorilla Stone Nation affiliated rapper Casanova and Highbridge affiliated rapper Don Q were all barred from performing at hip hop festival Rolling Loud New York due to fears of violence. This was a very bad look and it really changed the tone going forward. You see, this is a problem that we have in UK drill too. You've got somebody that might be considered a gangster, maybe they've got a bit of a past history in the street, but they begin to tell their stories through music. As a result, they get fame and fortune, which means that they don't even have to be involved in illegal business anymore. However, for one reason or another, the police come along and try and put a stop to their legitimate legal music activity. And they even attack the platforms, festivals, or organizations that are giving these guys an opportunity to develop their careers and make money. They cancel their shows, which has the unintended effect of pushing people back into the negative circumstances that they were trying to get away from through music, essentially starting the cycle over. So once the NYPD stepped in and said that you guys could not make show money, at this point the beast started to get reignited. Because without the prospect of show money, the genes of Brooklyn Drill had to resort back to getting attention by beefing intensely with each other. And the ultimate result of this was great music, but not so great consequences in the streets. In November 2019, Chef G dropped the big track Feel Away, a certified street banger which positions Chef G as the big old crip, riding around Brooklyn in his big old rolls with a big old crip cane looking like a bouse. Meanwhile, 22G's revived the very song that got his career started in the first place with the big release of Suburban Part 2. Now this was a massive banger. It had a ridiculous beat by UK drill producer Ghosty, which in my opinion hit harder than any song 22G's had done up until this point. 22's flow on this track is amazing, and he's spitting straight grease about shooting up Ops cars, leaving them like Swiss cheese, and then paying his lawyer to spank that charge. He specifically disses an op named Morley G from the Woo, saying he got beat up with a chair on live, a reference to this incident, which I definitely can't show you due to YouTube's community guidelines, but it ain't pretty. He also drops lyrics referencing pulling up to drills two shooters, one driver, and shooting guns out of the sunroof, which is very much worth remembering for later. In fact, 22Gs even later appeared in a genius lyrics annotated video for this song, looking like a straight up demon, basically saying that you need a lot of money if you want to commit moida. Chill out, bro, they get blasted, lawyer gonna spank that charge. I mean, y'all hearing this from a guy like me who had legal situations in the past. If you going into a murder or any type of serious felony case for the public defender, you gonna get the shoulder and the stick and shit ain't gonna come out the way you want it to, so you probably should invest in a lawyer. And if you ain't got the funds to do that, then you shouldn't be out here committing no crimes, you feel me? But it wasn't just 22Gs getting all the shine, he was putting on the gang too. Because in December 2019, Nick Blicky drops his breakout song, Drive the Boat, featuring 22Gs and Nas Blicky. Paving the way for what should have been a bright 2020 for the Blicky gang. And off the back of the buzz brewing around him and his crew, 22Gs would find himself all up in Funk Master Flex's show, which led to a hilarious moment where Funk Flex, perhaps not entirely educated about the ongoing Crip GD war, threw on a song by one of 22's biggest ops, Big Drip by Fabio Foreign, with hilarious consequences. Brooklyn Drill General. That's Big how, shit. That's how you want to be addressed? Bro. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Juanita, what you got, bro? So. Okay, so. Brooklyn, we in Brooklyn. I see how Flex playing. Big GD shit, bro. Bro, you think that's bad? Funk Flex even hit the hard woo at the end of the beat. That's how we get another beat off. Hold up. Oh shit. Woo. I couldn't believe that. Flex is lucky that he didn't get his mouth out open for that one. Anywho, while 22Gs is returning to his UK drill roots with tracks like Suburban Part 2, his main op, Chef G, is prodding him in return. In April, Chef drops the track Moody, which features a lyric saying that their new shit sounds like his old shit, perhaps a reference to 22Gs himself ditching and then re-adopting that UK drill sound. But on that note, thankfully Suburban Part 2 was only a taste of what musical fire was to come from 22Gs in the form of his next full-length project, Growth and Development, which released on April the 10th, 2020. Growth and Development is of course a well-known catchphrase amongst gangster disciples, which actually comes from the days when the old GD boss Larry Hoover tried to rebrand the gang as a self-improvement organization from jail back in 96. Anywho, 22Gs appeared on the front cover of Growth and Development, throwing up that GD pitchfork just to let you know that this is some gang shit. But more importantly, to my absolute delight, the entire project was produced by UK drill beat making legend, Ghosty. For the drill rap scene, I definitely put a stamp on it. When we talking Brooklyn drill, you need the UK beat to go with it. And that's what I did. So that's why I'm the leader of the Brooklyn drill scene or whatever. Shout out to Ghosty from the UK, definitely. Um, Once I heard that pack of beats, he said it was like 80 beats. It was crazy. It was like, 
I just felt like the old Tutu again. The same day as that project drops, Tutu G's also releases the music video for his track, No Questions. Probably my favorite track off the tape, just saying. Mainly because it's one of the most high energy drill tracks that I have ever heard. But to be fair, another close contender for best track on that project is Cash App, a track all about paying your hitters through everybody's favorite convenient hitman payment app, Cash App. On that project was also the song Careers, where Tutu basically calls out all of his ops for launching their careers off the back of beefing with the GDs. In fact, Tutu would later call out everybody who this song was cryptically referencing by name in an IG live whilst listening to this song. Pop Smoke, Fabio, Foreman, Chef G, JD is mad at them niggas, you work. Come on, I've been holding it down. Stop sucking my dick, nigga. Naturally, bringing back this kind of toxic op baiting energy to the Brooklyn drill scene didn't go unnoticed. And on the 8th of May 2020, following the raucous release of Suburban Part 2 by 22Gs, Chef G came through to bless fans with no Suburban Part 2. And ladies and gentlemen, this was yet another big banger. The beat went hard, the hook and the concept was just dope. Does he Suburbans who spin it. Don't see no suburbans who spin it. Chef's flow on the track is just crazy. And of course, it's full of cryptic and not so cryptic references to his GD ops. Referencing taking off GD black flags, sneak dissing Tutu for supposedly snitching in Miami. He flips Tutu's Mata line. And unlike No Suburban Part 1, where Chef G denied that it was a diss song, on No Suburban Part 2, Chef G confirmed in the lyrics that this was a diss track, not a song. Clearly, this direct attack to Tutu G's got under his skin. So Tutu G's responded to one of Chef G's posts promoting No Suburban 2, exposing Chef G for supposedly getting robbed in LA and his homeboy Sleepy for getting shot. From here, Chef G and 22Gs went back and forth in the comments, with Chef saying rather hilariously that he's gonna put Tutu in his pocket and walk around with him in there like an iPhone 5S. That's a good one to be fair, that's quite a good one. Tutu replied to this with the less hilarious but more ominous, RIP Chef G, with Chef responding by saying that he will slap the dookie out of Tutu and calling him his government name. Tutu replied on Facebook saying that he almost headshot Chef's man, and in response, Chef says, just remember what I almost did to you. Chef then once again posted calling Tutu a snitch for what happened in Miami, and suggesting that he signed to Kodak Black for a measly five racks. Tutu clapped back with a picture of Chef G roasting his jeans and saying he's broke, and eventually Tutu G's went live alongside his GD homeboy, Coach the Ghost, most notable for his catchphrase, Shan. Not to be confused with a Brooklyn rapper from the 90s who shot up a nightclub with Diddy, Shan, Shan. Anyway, 22Gs and Shan go live to call out Chef G, roasting him with back-to-back -back zingers like this is some kind of GD comedy jam. Stop comparing me to these pussy-ass rappers. They all teamed up to go against me, and I'm still here. You can't even fucking run for me if I ran down on you, pussy. No drip, nigga. Your drip is off. You never popped out nowhere, nigga. Come on, I come home, the nigga make a welcome home. Like, nigga, you want me to be in jail? The fuck, nigga? And money don't make you real, so stop playing this money shit and you don't have more money than me, bro. Tutu also defended himself against the ratting allegations. Y'all keep saying this rat shit, bro. Show me where I ratted at. How did I rat, nigga? How? How? How did I rat, bro? I never personally say Chef G ratted if he ain't rat, you heard? But eventually he got to it saying that he hadn't dissed Chef G for over a year and suggesting that Chef G is dick riding him for clout with the direct disses. I don't even diss boy for a whole year because boy be dick riding, you heard? Boy, be straight stick riding. Like, stop dick riding your fat ass. You're not lit. You was never relevant, bro. You heard? That's why I never dissed you, you fucking fat. You've been clout chasing since fucking day one, bro. Tutu also responded to the long running roast about supposedly signing to Kodak Black for a pitiful 5Gs, saying that because his chain is worth 50K, he would have had to sign 10 deals for it. Kinda didn't answer the question, but okay. Tutu would go on to deflect the bad record deal talk back on Chef G by suggesting that he's not independent and actually signed to New Line Entertainment under Corey Finesse. He said, yo, I signed to Kodak for 5K. You don't know what I signed to Kodak for, bro. You signed a new line, nigga. And after that, the clowning reached new heights as Tutu G's threw a basketball under his hoodie and pretended to be fat ass Chef G. Going on to dance to Chef's track No Suburban and telling the audience that the folks sliced Chef's head and that he stole Chef's bike. And the folks sliced through And I head. took this fucking bike. That's, I took this fucking bike. Whilst this was all going on, Chef G goes live on his own page and begins to roast Tutu hard. Niggas will slap the shit out that nigga, man. Stop playing around. Five bands each jewelry because look how little his chain is. He's wearing lifestyle in the back. I ain't gonna front, I'm giving that little nigga too much clout though, son. Chef proceeded to air out 22Gs for being broke and signed to Kodak, suggesting that 22 couldn't even show five bands on camera right now. This nigga got two five bands of peace chain on his neck, nigga. I will slap the shit out of you, nigga. Are you dumb? Listen, you signed to Kodak. I signed myself, kid. You're a bum, cuz. On Crip, you're a bum. Show me five bands right now. I'll back out 100K tomorrow, nigga, on the set. On A-Trade, nigga, look. 
On the set, nigga, I'll slap the shit out of that nigga, nigga. And who the fuck else standing with that nigga? Weirdly, from here, Chef G then goes on to give 22G some actually pretty good life advice, telling him to be smarter with his money and suggesting that Chef G is spending all of his money on investments, not jewelry. You're a kid. You thinking like a kid. You worrying about buying five bands of peace chain. Niggas is making big investments, kid. You understand? You need to invest in yourself. You fucking stupid. How you gonna buy chains? You never got a crib, nigga. What you talking about, kiddo? This is nothing. This is not. Listen. Listen. You see this? Yo, everybody tell 22 G's I'm gonna sign him right now. Yo, cuz, I will make his mom strip for me, cuz, on G's, what are you talking about? Anyway, Chef G goes on to rant even further, saying that if he bumps into 22 in real life, it's on. I wish we could just link up and just both of us could just be together alone real quick. You already know what happened, bro. Like, I will eat you like food or no homo type of time. I will rip you up, rip any one of y'all niggas, nigga, on the set, bro. Now, Chef G's rant goes on for quite some time, to the point where it's genuinely impressive that he can still keep thinking up funny shit to say. And funnily enough, more than just an angry rant, it very quickly becomes an amazing showcase for Chef G's fun and entertaining personality. He talking about fat. I'm fucking fat, nigga, duh, so what, nigga? What, what does that mean? That don't mean shit. I look better than you? I smell better than you? My teeth better than yours? I look better than you again. I rap better than you. I get more money than you. I got more money than you. You understand? I'm just a legend compared to you, kid. You just a fucking, you a peasant. Your gang fucking your bitch. Why they doing that? I, I said, I said, why are they doing that to you? No, no. Yo, yo, why are they doing that to you, Jeffrey? Eventually, Chef G did get off of live, sharing a story to his page saying that he needs to chill or he's going to end up snitching on himself. He then went on to say that Tutu had reached out to him to try and squash the beef before clowning him again with numerous image posts. He mocked him for the Florida situation. He said that he snitched on his dead homie and he shared an old unverified clip that seemingly depict Tutu G's getting caught lacking in the streets and doing the dash. Now, Tutu responded to this in yet another live saying that Chef G had dissed him for clout and naming all of the songs that Chef G had dissed him on. Now, this live was then met rather hilariously with Chef G getting all up in the comments saying that 22Gs had just been trying to get him on FaceTime. All y'all niggas diss me for clout, bro, you feel me? Licky in a box, Licky's funeral, no suburban. You feel me? Big up America. I'm still standing, bro. Now, over the course of this long ranting live, Tutu continues to call out Chef G over and over again for copying him for clout. Meanwhile, Chef G is in the comments clapping back with insult after insult. Chef G even called out 22 G's for looking nervous, which elicited a pretty Trump-like response from Tutu. Never nervous, nigga. Never been nervous. I look, I never been nervous my whole life. I've been through too much to be nervous, bro. Anyway, Chef asked numerous times to join this live, which didn't happen, sadly. Chef also hinted numerous times at having done something ominous to Tutu in the past, and at a certain point the fans even start getting on 22G's ass for not having the balls to let Chef G into the line. Hell, even at a certain point, teenage sneaker and apparently gang warfare connoisseur Benjamin Kicks popped up in the comments to goad these G's even further into gang violence. My son Ben Kicks under here, shout out Ben Kicks. We twirling heavy, son. Anywho, of course, Chef G didn't get invited in and once again decides to start popping off on his own live once again. I gotta go live, I ain't gonna front, he's chatting. He chatting. Yo, all that shit. Everybody tweeted, fuck that nigga live on crib. That guy tweeted over here. See, the thing is, this kind of was good for everyone. All of this brought a whole bunch of extra attention to both rappers and their music, but after all was said and done, it would turn out that Chef G had played 22Gs like a bit of a fiddle at this game. Because 22Gs was all up in his feelings, reacting very angrily to No Suburban Part 2, he leaned into this beef that brought a whole bunch of extra attention to the situation, and Chef G used all of that extra attention as a perfect lead-in to his next mixtape one and only. This dropped around a week after this bitter public feud, with all of this extra fanfare contributing to Chef's project landing at number 99 on the Billboard Albums chart, with it eventually even peaking at position number 13 after three weeks on there. Bear in mind, that's a bigger debut than Pop Smoke was getting when he was alive. Now, the 22G's growth and development project might not have charted, but it was definitely well received. Both artists had made a huge amount of noise in the streets of New York off the back of this very public feud. And whilst that was going on, Fabio Foreign had gone completely clear into the industry, landing himself a spot on the prestigious Double XL freshman list for 2020 and getting as far away from the deadly beasts in the streets of New York as possible. Now, I really wish at this point I could have said the same thing for Chef G and 22Gs, that they both just took their teams, went mainstream in the music industry and just lived happily ever after. But unfortunately, that was not the case. Amidst the backdrop of a deadly pandemic in 2020, Brooklyn Drill would become as deadly as it ever had been, with a tragic string of events unfolding that would see GDs and Crips losing their lives. 
2020 was a devastating year for all sides in the Brooklyn Drill movement. In February, Pop Smoke was killed, ironically in a home invasion carried out in Los Angeles, completely unrelated to the New York Crip and GD or Wu and Cho beefs. And whilst most of the hip hop community and drill community were devastated at the loss of Pop Smoke, not long after the news broke Cho GDs like Nas Blicky were caught on social media in a celebratory mood, dancing to Pop Smoke's music. Now, I just think it's important to point out that a lot of the people in the comments of this clip can't help but clown the fact that this supposed op just so happens to know every single word to Pop Smoke's song, which says a lot about the impact that he had on both sides of the fence. But anyway, jump forward to March the 6th, 2020, and 22G's drops his groundbreaking Sniper Gang freestyle. This ends up doing numbers, becoming one of his most iconic songs, and sitting today over 17 million views on YouTube. 22 is of course talking mad reckless on this track. He says he kills people and raps about it like Melly. He hinted that he robbed A Boogie's high bridge crew, and he disses the Woo Bloods D Sav JD, as well as formerly Woo Blood rapper 6ix9ine, who later reacted to this clip with DJ Academics in an IG Live, clowning Highbridge for getting robbed by the Blickies and asking Academics if he doesn't like him anymore after this track. Niggas robbed Highbridge for their chain and shot the niggas from Highbridge. No, I, I don't know, I don't know. I, don't, I like when he diss you. Dude, they shot Highbridge and took their chain in Florida. Oh. Be honest, when you heard this, you didn't like me no more? Yo, and 22G's, I met him in LA, he's real. 6 9 even reacted to 22G shouting out his old blood homies D Sav and JD, and then kind of hilariously pressed DJ Academics for not showing them respect. JD, not D Sav, especially not that snitch nigga. Yeah, he this, he this JD and D Sav. Remember it's stupid when I say G, JD, D Sav, dude, my God. Wait, you don't, oh, wanna, you don't wanna beef with them niggas either. Say sorry to them. With who? To JD and D Sav, say sorry to them. D Sav and JD. Man, I don't even know why niggas mention shit name. You, you sound like some real stand-up individuals. Mm -hmm. I like y'all. So, the Blicky GDs are out here bringing a lot of attention to themselves. There's rumors around this time that shootouts with rivals are becoming a regular occurrence. Obviously, the biggest targets for the ops are the big names that are associated with the Blicky gang and their musical movement. And unfortunately, it doesn't take long before a big name in this scene has their life taken away. 443 breaking news out of Brooklyn where a popular rapper was shot and killed overnight. Nick Blixey was uh, discovered with gunshot wounds on Winthrop Street in Prospect Lefferts Gardens. A picture from Instagram shows the rapper who has tens of thousands of followers, a 21-year-old artist born as Nicholas Thompson, was shot around 9.30 last night. Tributes poured in from the hip-hop world on social media for the Jamaican-American artist. He was set to release a mixtape on June 6, the NYPD has not released any information on the search for suspects. Yes, on May the 11th, 2020, Nick Blicky was shot dead in the middle of the street, just blocks away from his Brooklyn home. After this, we saw fellow GDs like Nas Blicky mourning their deceased friend, and we also saw Crip Ops like Chef G clowning on Facebook and seemingly laughing on IG Live. Yo! <laughs> From here, the feds even start looking at the Wu and Chu rap beef and the Pop Smoke connection as a result of all these ops gloating online. The cops do eventually catch up with a suspect who had fled New York to Philly after the murder happened, a man named Caliph Green who had actually already been convicted of attempted murder back in 2017. Apparently he'd been caught on surveillance video wearing a distinctive patterned hoodie, bronze sneakers, a distinctive globe tattoo on his arm, and more importantly, a blue Crip bandana. Now from what I understand, this case hasn't actually been to trial yet, and the man accused of killing Nick Blicky is still sat in jail with a mainly empty GoFundMe currently active. Within days of the slaying of Nick Blicky, opposing Crip neighborhoods like Canarsie were apparently shot up numerous times, and multiple individuals were murdered in areas with affiliations to this feud. This includes a 16-year-old boy who was shot dead in Crown Heights on May the 12th, another shooting which occurred in the Wu-associated 90s on May the 14th, where a man was shot in the chest after an on-foot confrontation near East 93rd Street and Clarkson Avenue at 8.20 p.m. The man who lost his life in this instance turned out to be Bug7, a Wu associate, and just after a week after this, in a seemingly unrelated incident, Wu affiliated rapper KJ Baller was also killed too, gunned down in a drive-by in Brooklyn. Now for the record, not all of these incidents are necessarily connected to this feud, but it just shows you how hot the mean streets of New York were, only a matter of days following this shocking incident. But from here, things didn't get much better throughout 2020. In June, there was a string of shootings within 20 minutes in Canarsie that the NYPD said were possibly connected, and eventually as a result of the constant back and forth attacks between the Crips and GDs, we would see another 
another big tragic loss for the Blicky crew. As in October 2020, Lou Blicky, real name Luis Caballero, was shot to death in Brooklyn at 1 a.m. on Sunday the 18th of October at Watkins Streets and Livonia Ave. A suspect named Rover Benjamin, age 20, was arrested near the scene and pinned as the trigger man, with cops suggesting that the shooter was a crip and that the victim was a member of OGD Six Tray, which if you don't remember was the original name for the Six Tray outlaw gangster disciples that Davon Rodney ran back in the day up until 2040. Within just days of this killing, there was yet another wave of drive-bys that left three dead and 11 injured, with some of these incidents being linked to the ops of the GDs, including this one, which left one man dead and five injured when a group of three gunmen opened fire from a white BMW 5 Series. Remember those? Apparently they were rolling two shooters, one driver, with all three individuals firing shots from the driver's side window, the passenger side window, and the sunroof. And we've got breaking news in Brooklyn where five people were shot. The gunfire erupting just before 1030. Citizen app video shows the scene on Hawthorne Street in Prospect Lefferts Gardens. Police appear to be carrying one victim. Eyewitness News reporter Derek Waller has the details from Prospect Lefferts Gardens, Brooklyn. And right now, police are looking for three gunmen seen shooting from a moving car here on Hawthorne Street last night. Neighbors say it sounded like a war zone. Police say three gunmen opened fire from a moving white sedan, one of them even popping out of the sunroof. Today, shell casings were everywhere. Investigators with evidence bags, the shooting likely gang related. I saw somebody injured. He was like on the floor, on the ground right there. And a guy was like bawling his eyes out. I mean, it was, it was horrific. Today, families had to duck under crime scene tape to get to work in school. And if things weren't already explosive enough, a week later, surveillance footage of the shooters emerged. New video to show you tonight of a deadly shooting in Brooklyn earlier this week. Surveillance video shows shots getting fired from a car Wednesday night. This is in uh, Prospect man. Lefferts Gardens area of Brooklyn. No, what Gunmen the? See, are seen firing out the windows on the driver's side and also out of the sunroof. Out the sunroof. Six people were shot, one of them was killed. That is wild. Anyway, from the streets, back to the music. On November the 27th, 2020, 2 2 gs would finally release new music. This came in the form of his hard-hitting tribute track, Fallen Blickies, which pays tribute to his recently deceased brothers. But naturally, not everyone can be so respectful. In December 2020, Blood Woo rapper 1090 Justo B chased clout by spraying GDK onto what appeared to be a headstone in a graveyard whilst insinuating that this was Nick Blicky's burial site. Now, it would turn out that this was just promo for his new music video, Rake in the Grave, and this wasn't actually Nick Blicky his grave because he'd been cremated anyway, but it just goes to show you not only the lengths that people will go to to disrespect their ops publicly, but also the lengths to which people will go to get clout. And in many ways, that's the problem with Brooklyn Drill. It's all about, and it always has been about, just saying the worst things possible on a drill beat to get attention. Whilst the war between the New York Crips and GDs was still raging, in August 2020, Fabio Forum went to Chicago to hang out with King Von, a Chicago black disciple who loves shouting GDK more than anyone. Oh my God, they're going to fight me. And I got that J. <laughs> They going stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. See? Big GDK. Viral. The whole shit GDK. Like VK heaven, nigga. It's like VK heaven, nigga. I ain't never been nowhere like this, nigga. This shit crazy. Bow! It's like, it's like everybody says the same thing. Fabio Foran had truly built his entire career off of being big GDK. And it worked. I mean, in many ways, it was actually a genius way to rapidly build up a fan base of the kinds of rap fans who love Chicago Drill. They already know and love the GDK catchphrase from all the Black Disciple rappers that they love. King Von, Chief Keef, Lil Durk. They all bang GDK with pride. So when Fabio Foran came out with Blicky in a box and started repping GDK hard, he activated a huge swell of rap and gang fans that already had an affinity with with the GDK movement. However, unlike 22Gs and Chef G, once success came knocking, Fabio Foran seemed to be able to stay out of the streets and stay focused on the music. Sure, 22Gs and the Blickies were dropping music as well as beefing in the streets, and Chef G also dropped music frequently in 2020. Tracks like Lights On, No Negotiations, and Mistakes, the last two coming from his Proud of Me Now projects, all of these guys played a huge role in turning Brooklyn Drill from just a couple of diss tracks back and forth between gang members to a fully blown music scene where everybody involved had a chance to make a million dollars legally. Yet the sad thing is, is, even once everybody involved had reached this point in their careers. There just seemed to be no way that those involved could leave things in the past, set this beef aside, and focus on the bright future they had ahead of them. In many ways, the saddest thing is that a lot of the young, impressionable men that got involved in this beef didn't even realize their full potential. They didn't even realize how far they could have gone with music if they could just leave things in the path and set this beef to one side. They say Pop Smoke was shot and killed during an early morning break-in at a home in the Hollywood Hills. Martinez was not stabbed or shot, but bound and his feet 
cemented before being thrown into the city waters. Sunday night, an argument over a parking spot left one man dead and led to a confrontation with police, leaving a second man killed. 19-year-old Jeffrey Alexander allegedly shot and killed 30-year-old Ladarian Tyrell Phillips of Homestead. Today, shell casings were everywhere. Investigators with evidence bags. The shooting likely gang-related. Nick Blixey was uh, discovered with gunshot wounds on Winthrop Street in Prospect Lefferts Gardens. Look, a lot of nasty shit has gone down on both sides of this beat. Something that really stood out to me in the process of researching this video was that whenever one of these rappers is interviewed by the likes of, say, DJ Vlad, he always tries to ask them whether or not there's some circumstances where they could set aside this beef and just focus on their career. Is there any way that you can imagine where y'all could bury whatever is happening, whatever happened in the past, and say, fuck it, we're gonna start doing some music together, we're gonna start doing some tours together. <laughs> Yeah, I'll just get that question. Look, I know this seems like a dumb question, especially if you've got a friend that has been killed as part of one of these deadly feuds. But the reality is, when you go and look at the recent songs by any of the artists that are involved in this feud, the comments are filled with fans echoing the same sentiments, saying they don't care about taking sides, they love the music coming out of both camps. Many of them, myself included, love all of the artists involved and don't mess with any of that gang shit. The true irony of this story is that all of the artists involved are holding themselves back by clinging on to street beef. You can't become the biggest gangster in the GDs or the Crips by letting beef in the street slide, but you also can't become the biggest artist in the rap game by dragging your gang war into the music industry with you. Everyone involved was able to use this beef to kickstart a huge amount of interest in their local music scene and their music. This beef was a massive success in making all of the artists involved millions of dollars and finally getting them a route out of the streets through music. I just hope that going forward, all of the surviving artists from this story can stay focused on their music and on their art and not on the beef. I hope Chef, Fabio and Tutu can all move forward in a positive direction and just keep on delivering hits, the music kind. Because everyone loves to sit around and say, oh, how tragic it was for Pop Smoke not to actually get to experience his own success. Well, Brooklyn Drill has a whole bunch of Pop Smokes that are still alive and fire. So let's make sure that we give them their flowers while they're still here, because who knows, they might not be for much longer. Let's appreciate the violent history of this pop in music scene, but still hope that everybody involved in this story continues winning at life, drama free, and living happily ever after. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the very long and very complex story of the deadly gang war between New York's Crips and GDs. I hope you enjoyed watching it, I enjoyed making it, and until next time, a peace out. Thank you so much for watching that one. I want to give a special thank you to Chris Rich for providing some of the beats for this video and my last CJ video. Really appreciate those beats, Chris. They are sounding sick. Also want to give a huge thank you to my editor, Camille, for making this video absolutely amazing. This was a big task and you absolutely smashed it. So thank you so much. I want to give a huge shout out to all of the patrons for supporting the channel. You guys are big legends. Thank you so much. Thanks to the Discord gang, everybody that's been supporting over on Trap, and more Ross. You guys are legends too. Hope you've been enjoying those videos. And finally, thank you so much to the Skillshare gang. Hit that link in description. Peace out.